In the night sky, dark markings on the moon's surface can be seen forming the shape of a rabbit or hare, pounding with a mortar and pestle. This image has given rise to mythical figures known as the moon rabbit, or moon hare, in folklore across East Asia and indigenous American cultures. Chinese legends tell of the rabbit as a companion to the moon goddess Chang'e, eternally grinding the elixir of life for her. Some versions say the rabbit pounds medicine for mortals or ingredients for mooncakes. In Japanese and Korean tales, the rabbit is seen pounding mochi or other types of rice cakes. An old Buddhist story relates how a rabbit demonstrated great virtue by offering its own body as food to a hungry beggar. Touched by this noble act, the beggar revealed himself to be the deity Chakra, and honored the rabbit by drawing its likeness on the moon for all to see. The moon rabbit legend has become tied to the mid-autumn festival in China, Tsukimi in Japan, and Chuseok in Korea. Similar autumn festivals celebrating the rabbit on the moon are held in Vietnam, Cambodia, and other parts of Southeast Asia. Across the Pacific, Mesoamerican cultures also have stories of rabbits connected to the moon. In Aztec lore, the god Quetzalcoatl was saved from starvation by a rabbit who offered herself as food. In gratitude, Quetzalcoatl placed her image on the moon. Maya art frequently depicts a rabbit with the moon goddess, and a Cree legend tells of a rabbit riding to the moon on the back of a crane, leaving a bloody mark on the bird's head and stretching its legs on the journey. Morgellons disease is a controversial skin condition, where sufferers find colored fibers and filaments embedded in or protruding from slow-healing lesions on their skin. First reported in 2002, many medical professionals consider it a form of delusional parasitosis, where patients falsely believe they are infested with parasites. However, research suggests there may be a physical cause. Skin samples from Morgellons patients contained unusual fibers made of keratin and collagen, produced by skin cells themselves, rather than being textile fibers stuck in the skin. The filaments sometimes resemble small hairs with tapered ends. Several studies have found evidence of infection with Borrelia spirochetes, the bacteria that cause Lyme disease. The spirochetes were detected in skin lesions and body fluids. Other tick-borne pathogens, like Bartonella, have also been found. It's theorized that infection of skin cells alters their keratin and collagen production, leading to fiber formation. The link between Morgellons and Lyme disease is still controversial. Most studies relied on specialized tests not endorsed by the CDC. Genetic factors likely play a role in developing Morgellons as well. Many patients experience symptoms similar to chronic Lyme, like joint pain, fatigue, and neurological issues, in addition to the skin problems. While many doctors still view Morgellons as purely delusional, research suggests an infectious origin, with Borrelia spirochetes as the leading culprit. More study is needed on this unusual condition to determine the true cause, genetic factors involved, and optimal treatment approach. The idea of morphic resonance proposes that memory is inherent in nature, and that the so-called laws of nature are more like habits. According to this hypothesis, habits evolve over time through a process of morphic resonance where patterns of activity influence similar patterns in the future, almost like a collective memory. Morphic fields are thought to organize biological systems at all levels, from the development of plants and animals to the behavior of social groups. These fields act as a kind of blueprint, guiding systems towards particular endpoints or goals, known as attractors, via specific pathways called creodes. The fields themselves evolve over time, explaining how new patterns of behavior or form can emerge and stabilize. The idea of morphic resonance has been applied to various phenomena, including the collective memory of species, telepathy in animals and humans, and even the sense of being stared at. Experiments have been conducted to test some of these ideas, such as whether people can unconsciously detect when they are being watched. While quite speculative, 
Morphic resonance offers a thought-provoking perspective on how order and pattern might arise in nature without the need for eternal fixed laws. The habits of nature, in this view, are not set in stone but are constantly evolving through the interplay of morphic fields and the systems they organize. This unconventional theory aims to provide a more holistic and dynamic understanding of the world around us. In the Point Pleasant area of West Virginia, a mysterious creature known as the Mothman was reportedly seen by several people between November 1966 and December 1967. The first newspaper report described a man-sized bird, or creature, with glowing red eyes. Witnesses claimed the creature had a slender, muscular humanoid body around seven feet tall with white wings. It made screeching sounds and could fly, even chasing cars at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. More sightings were reported after the initial newspaper coverage. Local authorities at the time suggested the creature may have been a large heron or sandhill crane that wandered out of its normal migration route. The popularization of Batman at the time may have influenced the name Mothman being attached to the sightings. After the nearby Silver Bridge collapsed in December 1967, resulting in 46 deaths, the Mothman legend grew, and speculation arose that the sightings were connected to the tragedy. Some even claimed Mothman sightings foreshadowed the bridge collapse and other disasters. The legend gained wider attention after the 1975 book The Mothman Prophecies by John Keel and the 2002 film Adaptation. An annual Mothman festival in Point Pleasant, started in 2002, attracts thousands of visitors and features a 12-foot-tall metallic Mothman statue. While the Mothman legend persists in popular culture, many analysts propose that the original sightings likely arose from misidentified birds, such as owls, herons, or cranes. Hoaxes and the effects of publicity and folklore may have also played a role in shaping and perpetuating the legend over the years. Some continue to speculate about paranormal explanations, but as with many such cryptid tales, the real source of the Mothman legend remains elusive. Located in Northern California, Mount Shasta is a 14,000-foot-tall volcano known for its striking presence and association with various supernatural and mythical beliefs. Some say that deep beneath the mountain lies the hidden city of Telos, home to the survivors of the lost continent of Lemuria. These Lemurians are described as seven-foot-tall beings with long hair, often seen wearing white robes and sandals. Mount Shasta is also believed to be a base for reptilian humanoids called the Lizard People, and the area is a hotspot for UFO sightings. The mountain holds sacred significance for several Native American tribes, who have long established traditions tied to it. The volcano's geological complexity, including its steep slopes, glaciers, and fumaroles, contributes to its powerful and mysterious reputation. While scientists study Mount Shasta's volcanic history and processes, many spirituality seekers and believers are drawn to the mountain's undeniable energy. Regardless of one's beliefs, Mount Shasta continues to draw in those who encounter its majestic presence. The Mozart effect is a theory that suggests listening to Mozart's music may temporarily improve scores on spatial reasoning tests, which are part of IQ tests. The idea gained popularity in the 1990s, after a study found that college students who listened to Mozart's sonata for two pianos in D major performed better on spatial reasoning tasks. This led to claims that, listening to Mozart makes you smarter, especially for children, and sparked a commercial fad of Mozart CDs marketed to parents. However, subsequent research and meta-analyses have shown little evidence to support the existence of a Mozart effect. Any cognitive benefits appear to be short-term and related to increased mood and arousal rather than a specific effect of Mozart's music. Despite the lack of scientific support, the idea of the Mozart effect has had a significant cultural and political impact, with some governments even considering providing classical music to children. 
while listening to enjoyable music may have some positive effects on mood and cognition. The claim that Mozart's music can boost intelligence is now widely regarded as a myth by the psychological community. The Mpemba effect is a curious phenomenon where, under certain conditions, hot water can freeze faster than cold water. This counterintuitive idea has been observed since ancient times, with Aristotle noting that many people in his day would put water in the sun to cool it more quickly. The effect is named after Erasto Mpemba, a Tanzanian student who brought it to the attention of the scientific community in 1963 after noticing that hot ice cream mix froze faster than cold mix. Despite various experiments and studies, the exact cause of the Mpemba effect remains unclear. Factors such as evaporation, convection, supercooling, dissolved gases, and the effects of frost in container materials have all been proposed as potential explanations. Some scientists have even suggested that the unique properties of hydrogen bonding in water at different temperatures might play a role. While the Mpemba effect continues to puzzle researchers, it highlights the complex and sometimes surprising behavior of water, a substance essential to life on Earth. Understanding this phenomenon could provide insights into the fundamental physics of liquids and their phase transitions. Similar effects, such as the ability of hot water to sometimes vaporize faster than cold water due to the Leiden frost effect, show that the relationship between temperature and the behavior of fluids is not always as simple as it might seem. In 2014, a medical center in the Netherlands performed a very unusual checkup on a 1,000-year-old patient, a Buddha statue with a mummified monk hidden inside. The statue, which was on loan to a Dutch museum, was taken to the hospital for CT scans and other tests to learn more about its ancient contents. The mummy inside the statue is believed to be that of Liu Quan, a Buddhist master who died around the year 1100. Surprisingly, the scans revealed that the monk's organs had been removed and replaced with paper scraps printed with ancient Chinese characters and other unidentified materials. One theory is that Liu Quan may have practiced self-mummification, a process some Buddhist monks undertook to become revered living Buddhas. This involved following a special diet over several years to gradually starve the body and enhance preservation. The monks would eat things like nuts, berries, bark, and even poisonous tree sap used to make lacquer, which acted as an embalming fluid. Near death, a monk would be sealed in an underground chamber, meditating until he passed away. If the body was successfully mummified after three years, it would be placed in a temple to be venerated. The mummy of Liu Quan is thought to be the only one ever found inside a Buddha statue. This fascinating discovery provides a glimpse into the ancient practices and beliefs of Buddhist monks, and the length some would go to in their spiritual pursuits. The Munchausen Trilemma, named after the story of Baron Munchausen pulling himself out of a mire by his own hair, is a thought experiment that demonstrates the impossibility of proving any truth without relying on assumptions. When attempting to prove a proposition, there are only three options. The circular argument, where the proof assumes the truth of the proposition. The regressive argument, where each proof requires further proof in an infinite regress. Or the dogmatic argument, which relies on accepted but unproven precepts. This trilemma, also known as Agrippa's trilemma, highlights the fundamental problem of justifying knowledge. Just as Munchausen cannot make progress because he has no solid ground to stand on, any attempt to justify knowledge must either start with existing knowledge, dogmatism, never truly begin, infinite regress, or rely on circular reasoning. Philosopher Hans Albert formulated the trilemma, arguing that certain justification is impossible because all attempts to justify knowledge will inevitably face one of these three unsatisfactory options. This idea challenges the classical notion of certain knowledge and suggests that we must accept the impossibility of absolute certainty. However, this does not necessarily lead to relativism or the dismissal of objectivity. 
philosophers like Karl Popper and Hans Albert propose fallibilism, which acknowledges the impossibility of certainty but strives to get as close to the truth as possible while remaining aware of our inherent uncertainty. The Munchausen trilemma remains a fascinating philosophical problem that prompts us to question the foundations of knowledge and the limits of human understanding. Some musicians are creating music by connecting mushrooms to synthesizers and harnessing the fungi's bioelectricity. One such artist is Noah Kalos, also known as Mycolico, a mycologist based in North Carolina who describes his work as a collaboration between humans, mushrooms, and machines. Using a biodata sonification module, he connects gourmet mushrooms to a synthesizer to generate unique sounds. Another artist, Tarun Nayar from Vancouver, draws inspiration from Indian classical music and its emphasis on vibrations. Nayar uses the bioelectricity of plants and the Earth's natural resonance to create music, plugging circuit cables into the plants, and translating the small changes in electrical resistance into musical notes. Interestingly, renowned 20th century composer John Cage was also a passionate amateur mycologist. He co-founded the New York Mycological Society and even appeared on an Italian quiz show, winning the jackpot with his mushroom expertise. While Cage believed he could hear the mushrooms in the woods, the advent of new technology has now made it possible for fungi to express themselves musically through bioelectricity. Musica Universalis, also known as the music of the spheres or harmony of the spheres, is an ancient idea suggesting that the movements of celestial bodies create a kind of music through their proportions. This concept dates back to ancient Greece, and was later developed by astronomer Johannes Kepler in the 16th century. The core idea is that mathematical relationships express qualities or tones of energy in numbers, shapes, and sounds, all interconnected within a pattern of proportion. Pythagoras observed that the pitch of a musical note is related to the length of the string producing it, and he proposed that celestial bodies emit unique sounds based on their orbital motion, although these sounds are beyond human hearing. This concept links mathematics, astronomy, and music, considering them interconnected disciplines. Johannes Kepler explored this relationship further in his work, suggesting that musical intervals and harmonies describe the motions of planets, even though they are inaudible to humans. Kepler believed that the soul could perceive this celestial harmony, reflecting his deep faith in a creator who orchestrated the cosmos in a harmonious manner. Despite some inaccuracies, Kepler's work laid the groundwork for understanding the connection between geometry, astronomy, and music. The idea of the music of the spheres continues to inspire modern culture, appearing in literature, music, and even video games, where it serves as a source of artistic and philosophical inspiration. Scientists have found life in one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth, the pitch-dark sub-zero waters beneath Antarctica's ice shelves. While drilling through the Filchner ice shelf, researchers came across a seafloor boulder that is home to several species that may have never been seen before, including sponges and other stationary creatures that live their lives attached to one place. This discovery is unusual because the organisms were found far from regions where photosynthesis is possible, which is how most life on Earth survives. Instead, these creatures likely rely on chemosynthesis, a process where bacteria use chemical reactions to make sugars and form the basis of a food chain, similar to what is found near ocean thermal vents or in some caves. The boulder is estimated to be between 625 and 1,500 kilometers from the nearest region of photosynthesis, making it a fascinating and perplexing find for the scientists involved. 
To learn more about these organisms and their unique environment, researchers will need to find innovative ways to study them, as they are located 260 kilometers away from the nearest research ships and under 900 meters of ice. This discovery not only pushes the boundaries of our understanding of life on Earth, but also raises numerous questions about how these creatures survive, what they eat, and how long they have been there. Nagoro, also known as Nagoro Doll Village, is a unique village situated in the Iya Valley on Shikoku Island, Japan. What sets this place apart is the abundance of lifelike dolls that can be found throughout the village, making it a rather unusual tourist attraction. Once home to around 300 residents, Nagoro's population has significantly declined over the years due to Japan's broader population trends. By September 2019, the village had just 27 inhabitants. The story of Nagoro's doll proliferation begins with Tsukimi Ayano. She returned to Nagoro in the early 2000s to care for her father, and created a doll resembling him, placing it in a field. This marked the start of a unique trend. Tsukimi Ayano has since crafted over 400 dolls, including replacements, with approximately 350 of them now residing in the village. These dolls come in various forms, with some replicating actual residents, while others are entirely fictional. Ayano's initiative inspired others in the village to follow suit. Even the local school, which closed in 2012 due to declining enrollment, is now filled with dolls. In one classroom, you can find self-portrait dolls made by the last two students to attend the school, dressed in their own clothes. The dolls are spread throughout Nagoro, creating a surreal atmosphere. You might encounter dolls sitting by a telephone pole, fishing in the river, or waiting at a bus shelter. The village's transformation into a haven for these dolls has turned it into an offbeat tourist destination. Aside from its doll-filled streets, Nagoro is also known for the nearby Nagoro Dam, which has been in operation since 1961 and serves as a source of hydropower generation. Nano-engineers have created a quasi-crystal, a scientifically intriguing and technologically promising material structure, using nanoparticles and DNA. Unlike ordinary crystals, which have a repeating pattern, quasi-crystals don't have a regular structure. Quasi-crystals made from atoms can have exceptional properties, such as absorbing heat and light differently, exhibiting unusual electronic properties, or having surfaces that are very hard or slippery. The team focused on nanoparticles shaped like two pyramids stuck together at their bases, known as bi-pyramids. They used DNA strands encoded to recognize one another to program the particles to assemble into a quasi-crystal. Simulations showed that decahedra, which are ten-sided pentagonal bi-pyramids, would form a quasi-crystal under certain conditions and with the right relative dimensions. The resulting quasi-crystal resembles an array of rosettes in concentric circles, with the ten-sided shapes creating a 12-fold symmetry in 2D layers that stack periodically. This stacked structure is called an axial quasi-crystal. Unlike most axial quasi-crystals, the tiling pattern of the new quasi-crystal's layers doesn't repeat identically from one layer to the next. Instead, a significant percentage of tiles are different, in a random way, adding stability to the structure. This breakthrough opens the way for designing and building more complex structures using nanoparticles and DNA. It demystifies the formation of quasi-crystals and shows how the programmable nature of DNA can be harnessed to deliberately design and assemble these unique structures. In the early 1990s, NASA sent over 2,000 moon jellyfish polyps into space on the Space Shuttle Columbia as part of the first Space Lab Life Sciences mission. The purpose was to study how the lack of gravity affects jellyfish development and behavior. Jellyfish and humans share a common orientation according to gravity, with tiny crystals and hair cells in our inner ears helping us sense up, down, left, and right. Jellyfish have similar structures at the margin of their bell. The space jellyfish developed normally, but showed irregular pulsing and movement once back on Earth, 
essentially suffering from vertigo. This experiment was significant because it gave insight into how humans born and reared in space may respond when later experiencing gravity on a planetary body. The results suggest that if humans are to spend generations traveling to another system, we'll need to figure out how children born aboard the spaceship will acquire a taste for gravity to avoid stumbling in their colonization efforts. Every year, hundreds of strange disappearances occur in America's national parks, with only a handful of people ever seen again. These disappearances often seem illogical, bizarre, or unexplainable, even to those highly equipped to solve mysteries. One such case involves a three-year-old boy known as John Doe, who vanished for five hours near a fly-fishing river. When found, he claimed to have followed a woman resembling his grandmother to a mountain, where he encountered a room full of motionless robots and weapons. The boy's grandmother also reported being dragged out of her tent and finding two small holes near the back of her head. Another baffling case is that of four-year-old Alfred Bailharts, who disappeared in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park in 1938. Despite a six-mile search, no trace of him was found, except for his scent, which dogs traced 500 feet uphill without any footprints. Hikers six miles away claim to have seen a dazed boy in a dangerous rock outcropping shortly after his disappearance. In 1992, 12-year-old Kenny Miller, who had the mental capacity of a four-year-old, vanished from Yosemite National Park. A month later, his body was found 1,500 feet above the area where he was last seen, in a notoriously inaccessible location. Nine-year-old David Gonzalez disappeared in San Bernardino National Forest while fetching cookies from the family car. His badly decomposed body was found a week later in an area that had already been searched, suggesting he was dropped there by someone or something. Authorities claimed he was dragged off by a mountain lion, despite no supporting evidence. Even adults have fallen victim to these strange disappearances. Thelma Pauline Melton, 58, vanished while hiking with friends in the Great Smoky Mountains, despite her slow pace due to medical problems and her familiarity with the trail. The disappearance of six-year-old Dennis Martin in the Great Smoky Mountains in 1969 is one of the most famous cases. He vanished while playing a prank on his family, and despite a massive search involving the FBI and Green Berets, no trace of him was ever found. The leader of the FBI search team later committed suicide, and a special forces member suggested that something paranormal must have been involved. These cases highlight the mysterious and potentially terrifying phenomena occurring in America's national parks, leaving many questions unanswered about the true nature of these disappearances. The Nazca Lines, ancient geoglyphs found in Peru's Nazca Desert, were created by the Nazca people between 500 BC and 500 AD. These lines, formed by removing the top layer of reddish-brown pebbles to reveal light-colored clay, depict various shapes such as straight lines, geometric patterns, and zoomorphic figures like a hummingbird, spider, fish, condor, monkey, lizard, dog, and human. Covering around 50 square kilometers, with a combined length exceeding 1,000 kilometers, the Nazca Lines remain a mystery in terms of their purpose. Scholars propose religious significance, astronomical markers, or even paths to places of worship. Despite being only 10 to 30 centimeters deep, they are fragile and face threats from pollution, erosion, and human activities. Recent discoveries using artificial intelligence unveiled four new Nazca lines, dating back to 100 BCE to 300 CE. These geoglyphs, identified through satellite imagery and confirmed by on-site visits, include depictions of a human holding a club, large legs or hands spanning over 250 feet, a fish, and a bird. Researchers from Yamagata University utilized AI-driven deep learning technology to accelerate the identification process, showcasing the potential of combining AI with field surveys in archaeological studies. The purpose of the Nazca Lines continues to captivate researchers and the public, inspiring ongoing exploration and preservation efforts.